So moving on to the next slide, uh, this is a new feature that basically introduced in 11G. Uh, when you have 11107 path set, you will see a new feature affinity uh, called uh, universal connection pool. For example, let's say you have three instances running for a RAC databases and you have an application, a web-based application, and the connections are coming to the connection pool to the different instances. For example, when you, uh, when you connect through the web, uh, sorry, uh, through the web application using the web uh, pool connection, let's say your connection is established to the instance one and it serves you better. So you think that you want the first connection that establishes should always go to the instance one and you can notify the load balancing advisory sending a flag that affinity kind of feature that anytime I made a first connection from the web it should go to the first one. Uh, can we go back to the previous slide please? All right, here the previous slide please. No, no, next one. Next one please. All right, here I'm going to explain you a picture that involved in the runtime connection load balancing. Now just imagine you have a RAC database with three instances and you have a service defined with the name called CRM. Now you have using the load balancing advisor here. Now <clears throat> when you send a request, the request uh, will go to the connection management where it looks, oh, okay, the instance one has very low resources uh, in, the, in the term like it is not heavily used. So let me put 60% of the workload on the instance one. And going back to the instance two, it is slightly busier, but still we can put a 10% of workload on it. And whereas on the instance three, it's busy, not so busy. So okay, let me put maybe 30% of the workload on the node three. So it distributes the connection during the runtime. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. All right, uh, so as we discussed that uh, you, uh, uh, the use fast connection failure, this is a new feature introduced in 10G release one uh, in order to provide the transparent application failure facility for the application connection that uses the JDBC, ODP, .NET, and OCI kind of things. If you are using JDBC thin client, uh, when a node or maybe instance goes down, the application is used to get the uh, node down error. So in order to prevent this error, you can trap this error and within no time you can re-establish a new connection. The connection will go to the surviving instance. So this will solve, uh, this will actually reduce the timing to know the node is down and you need to connect to the other connection. So we have two types of load balancing here, server side load balancing and side load balancing. Connect side client side load balancing basically does not bother about the resource. It actually randomly send the connections to the uh, instances sequentially. And server load balancing uses some kind of calculation to see which instance or maybe which node is heavily used or maybe which is free kind of stuff. Next slide please. Parallel query. Now when you're doing parallel query, you have a lot of options. Remember that you can parallelize a query and that can be parallelized on a single node uh, so that would be your degree and then if you wanted to have it parallelized from the node where it started across the other nodes that would be your nodes parameter that you specify in your parallel specification and then of course remember too that if the object is partitioned you could be getting parallel for the partitions as well so that you could in fact end up with you know ten parallel operations happening per instance uh, across the node. So you have to really think about your parallel query and make sure that you are doing it in a way that's uh, sufficient for your needs but not overwhelming for your hardware. Should You can then uh, restrict your parallel queries to fit your needs and you can do that either with services or parallel instance groups. Next slide please. So how does parallel execution work? Well, with serial execution, it's very simple. There's one oracle process that gets spawned or forked when, when you uh, issue a command, and it does the job. And so if that one process has to hit a 10 billion row table, however fast that one single process can handle it is what happens. 
with the parallel execution, you get multiple processes. But keep in mind that that can actually be a lot more than you think. If I have a select count star from sales, like is shown here, and I want parallel degree four, I would probably get four. But if I were doing a query and said select something, uh, group by, order by, I might end up with quite a few parallel processes. In other words, I might end up with four for the group by, four for the order by, and four for the select process. So this, is, again, is where you have to think about what you're doing. And then that could be multiplied by your partitions. So again, don't overdo it. Now here's an example of parallel operations. And this helps us to understand a key point. There's intraparallelism, which would be like breaking up the sort into three three sections, A through K, L through S, and T through Z, or performing the one-third scan, one-third scan, one-third scan. And then there's interparallelism, which is split by the blue bars there. And that is parallelism talking to parallelism. That's important because when you look at an explain plan for a query, you can actually see what the parallel operation type is. Now, ideally, you'd like to see parallel to parallel but sometimes you will see parallel to serial or serial to parallel. You need to look at those and make sure that you're getting the kind of behavior you think is going to match the way you want the resources used. Um, and notice there, DOP is your degree of parallelism. That also shows up in your explain plan. And it's three because we have the coordinator, that's one level. We have the consumers and the producers, that's two other levels. Next slide, please. So here's a parallel query where it's not going across nodes. Pretty simple picture. Let's compare that with the next slide, please. And now our parallel is going across nodes. Next slide, please. Oh, no, go back one second. Notice that the query was identical. In other words, you don't have to change the application in order to get the parallel behavior. You can actually control that in a lot of different ways. Yes, you can do it with hints in your queries, but I don't like to do hints because if something changes in the hardware, that hint is hard-coded. I would prefer to do it either through uh, init.or or SP file parameters or by the object types or with resource groups. It's another way you could kind of finagle with the uh, parallelization. Next, please. I okay, think. I'm going to give you an overview of the storage and organization within Oracle Rack, the various files, types of files that comprise the Oracle Rack infrastructure. The general recommendation for using a non-shared Oracle home versus a shared Oracle home is because a shared, a non-shared Oracle home allows you to do rolling upgrades, which essentially means that you can upgrade one instance at, at a time while your cluster keeps up and running and your clients keep getting serviced. Next up is Syed, who is going to give you an overview of All right, uh, administration and management. All right, sir. So next few slides, I'm going to explain you about the rack administration, management, utilities, and that stuff. OK. Uh, at cluster level, you have three levels of management, administration things. You can administrate and manage cluster things, database level, and instance level. So in the next slide, we are going to discuss the utilities tools that are useful to manage an administrator. All right. So Oracle Enterprise Manager is a GUI tool. And you can also use grid control to manage all your clusterware and rack databases, all the <coughs> operations. So you can add instance. You can drop instance. You can create things. You can schedule things, everything using these GUI interfaces. If you don't like uh, working with the command line prompt, so this is your option. All right. So talking about the, go back to previous slide, please. OK, talking about the DBCA, DBCA is let you create a rack database, add instances, uh, drop instances. And you can also, if you are working with Tng release too, you can also add services, enable, disable things. Uh, talking about the Vipka virtual internet protocol configuration agent that allows you to configure the Vipka at the end of the cluster web configuration. And the cluster verification utility is very useful utility using which you can 
uh, check the readiness of the things uh, pre and post. So in the coming next two slides, we are going to talk more about the cluster verification utility. So these are the major cluster aware util uh, command line utilities that we use to manage and administrate the cluster wide. However, CRS start, CRS stop, CRS start, these are duplicated in 11G release 2 and no longer available. The previous slide please. Alright, uh, CRS CTL is the cluster aware utility which is like uh, which work uh, which is like interface between you and the cluster aware using which you can perform start and stop health check and enable disable things uh, like uh, you can also stop the cluster start the cluster disable auto startup disable auto stop of uh, cluster web things. So SRV CTL is stands for server control utility using which you can stop, start, enable, disable the resources like databases, like databases, instance, uh, ASM, node apps, uh, virtual IP, ONS, sort of things. Next slide please. As we talk about the cluster verification utility, uh, this utility gives you the uh, uh, you gives you the facility to uh, check the things. Like before, you configuring the cluster where if you want to know if your servers are ready, which are all uh, meeting the requirements. So you can using you can use this verification utility to in order to check the readiness of the servers at different layers. Like you can check it uh, pre post configuration of a cluster maybe before you create a rack database to check whether your systems are ready and kind of things. So there are two scripts for, uh, provided for uh, CUV. Uh, for example, if you are not configured at the clusterware, so this utility comes with run cluster verify.sh file so that you can either download from the OTN or maybe you can find it uh, in your source, or the, sorry, the software CD or resource. So once the, uh, once the clusterware is configured, cluster verification is going to install automatically and then which can be called using the just class cluster verify.sh command. Next slide please. Yeah, this, this picture actually tells you like what I have just discussed a while ago. So you can check the system readiness whether like your uh, hardware setup, network setup, IP addresses, sense, uh, storage, everything is ready across all the nodes in order to proceed with the cluster verification, uh, cluster installation things which uh, this, this stage is like pre-CFS and then you can also check the uh, pre-CRS installation. So before you are ready with configuring cluster, you can just use this command just to make sure that everything is ready and you can go ahead instead of you start and get into get into troubles. So likewise you can also use this utility before you install your RAC software or also you can use it before you create the RAC databases. That's it. Oracle RAC is typically deployed on low cost commodity hardware. In 2004, Oracle along with Dell, EMC and Intel launched Project MegaGrid to demonstrate the effectiveness, functionality and reliability of the grid computing infrastructure of which Oracle Rack is the backbone of. Oracle Exadata is the world's fastest series of database machines that have been that are being offered by Oracle for the last year, two years or so. First with HP as a hardware partner and now with Sun. Latest and greatest technologies such as InfiniBand, compression, PCI, flash cache, intelligence at the storage layer, and a few other great innovative technologies that they've added to the Oracle Exadata. So thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, to summarize, Oracle Rack is the clustering product offering from Oracle and provides great features such as availability, high availability, elasticity, load balancing, and failover. The materials, the multimedia, the content, the presentation, everything that you see today and hear today will be available for download on demand at brainsurface.com and we hope to see you next week on Thursday, the 13th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And with that, we're going to end our presentation. Thanks for joining us.